Hello beautiful souls. Welcome back to Ladybug Farm. Happy May Day. We were hoping to take you on a tour of our garden today. Maybe share some tips and then through the seasons maybe you can see some of the progress that we have out Hi. here on the farm. So at the entrance to our garden we have a few peach trees. Unfortunately the peach trees this year all the peaches seem to have been damaged by the frost. So in the future, I think that I would have put a little bit more research into getting peach trees with higher chill hours. But last year we did get a few tiny little peaches. And growing over the arbor, last year we planted a few kiwi vines. Now these aren't the kiwis, the fuzzy ones that you would get at the grocery stores. These are a smaller sweet kiwi berry and we have a variety that is self-fertile. Some kiwis will need to have females and males, but these are self-fertile and they are amazing vines that hopefully will grow really, really lush and vibrant. But right now you can see the leaves are really crunchy. They've had two green growths so far and we've just had two frosts that have killed them. So. I just see new leaf buds appearing, so that's good news because I was very worried for them that they wouldn't be. But as you enter our garden, we have our ducks over to the east side. They are just pets for us. The children are able to feed them by hand and they're just really friendly to see going around the yard and we let them in when the strawberries aren't growing and they love to eat. What do the ducks love to eat? Snails and slugs. Yeah, and that definitely helps with, with things, but they will get in and eat the broccoli and eat all your cabbage and eat your seed starch. So we do keep them in there at certain times of the year. We have our pirate lagoon behind us and throughout our garden, we put and incorporate little areas to have the children be able to play while we're working out in the garden. Coming up on this first bed, we just have a lot of different things growing here. The first thing we had was arugula. It has gone to flower and we've taken all of that now. It was up pretty high. And we fed all of this to our goats. Here, we did not plant these. These are just some green onions ready to be harvested. They came back from the year prior. Some strawberries from the year prior. Yum, yum. Go ahead. I got some pink. And then we planted a few zucchini plants throughout. We have honestly never had luck with zucchini here in the sand hills. We have done diatomaceous earth at the base. We've done tinfoil around the base. We've done insect netting last year, but the vine borers always seem to get the best of our plants and we get like one or two small zucchinis and they're done. We don't spray any chemicals here, so it's just a hit or miss. We're gonna give it a try. And if that plant fails, luckily we have some other things growing here. We also have Swiss chard planted throughout. And then on this trellis here, these are some English peas. They're called King Tut. We planted these with the children at our nature school and it was a fun history lesson. Who knows if they really did come from King Tut's tomb, but we took it as a history lesson. We went with it and talked about ancient Egypt and the pharaohs and we're very excited because these will be a purple potted pea. And some of them will have to find the flowers, but the flowers are really pretty purple too if we can see them. <laughs> As you can see on 
some of the other beds. We have a lot of strawberries growing and they're just starting to come in. I did not thin enough with our strawberries. So I think they're a little bit smaller than what you would get at some other farms, but lesson learned for next year. We will just have to thin a lot more for our strawberries. We plant flowers throughout the whole garden. We called this one when we first installed our butterfly diner. We have a butterfly bush, black eyed Susans. And when we started, there were just a few little black eyed Susan flowers in here and they spread like crazy. So all these patches right here are places where I've dug them out and replanted them throughout the yard or replanted them in other places you know. and they will fill in throughout the year. So here we have sweet corn growing. It's kind of planted throughout. You have to have a cluster of it. It is wind pollinated. So the closer and the more corn you have together, the better it will do. I'm hoping this will be enough. We'll go back in later in the year if we have the space and plant popcorn, which we grew last year. But the sweet corn and the popcorn cannot be planted at the same time. Otherwise they will cross pollinate and the sweet corn won't be sweet and the popcorn won't pop. So we try to plant those at different times. We also have Swiss chard growing here which quite honestly, the seed wasn't germinating and that's why we planted some other things. And then just recently the seed started germinating. Random things, we have, this is a sunflower growing. We have spinach. Spinach also did not germinate for us this year and then it just started coming up. So I don't think we'll get much from that spinach. It will likely bolt. Just this week at nature school, our children planted some pole beans here on this trellis and I love this variety of beans. It is originally we got it from Baker Creek and I do believe they were dragon's tongue but they are a purple streaked pole bean and a lot of times with pole beans they have this string in the middle that's just they're not as tasty but I think that this variety is even tastier than the bush varieties that we can grow so we're hoping that that grows in abundantly and then it also provides a really nice shade area for the children to play in. When they're over in the mud kitchen, they come in here and just kind of hang out and enjoy it. Over in this bed, we have potatoes growing. These are a purple beauty potato. You'll notice throughout the garden, we kind of let things re-sow themselves if that happens, but potatoes and tomatoes are one thing we do not let that happen. There's a lot of diseases that can overwinter and manifest in your plants the following year. So potatoes and tomatoes, those are ones you have to rotate which beds you have them in every year. So we have those purple beauties, these ones here, those were damaged by that late frost, but luckily they have shown a lot of new growth since then. So I don't think that that whole plant will be lost, which is really nice. Also coming up back here. Beets. Yes, those are beets. We have golden beets and then we have, these are the golden ones. And then we have Detroit red beets. Pole beans, hopefully will be coming up within the next week along here. And then we planted a few calendula flowers right along the front side. We like to use our calendula to make um, a healing salve for boo-boos. We did make a video about how to do that if you want to check that out. And then other things that are coming up. This is hyssop. It's a lovely little purple flower. The bees love it. It does come in like a weed everywhere it will reseed itself so if you're gonna plant hyssop just know you love it and it's gonna come up everywhere we also love to use it for tea as you can see the children just pick it up and eat it even right at nature school 
Behind us, you can see we have a mud kitchen where the children can play. We needed some source. It gets so hot in here in the summertime. So we needed some source for the children to be protected from all of the sun, but still be out here and allow myself to either be working or allow us to play. So we put a little shade cloth up. We have a teepee. On the back side of the mud kitchen, we put some things for children to make some music with. record the weather and the temperature and the rainfall. And what is all this green stuff behind me? Elderberry! Yes! Our elderberries are coming in nice and lush. We did no post some videos out. about how to turn your elderberry twigs into nature necklaces, which was something we did at nature school this week. But elderberries are a great one to plant and they spread like crazy. Don't use green ones. So the, all these green ones are from this year's growth. of our elderberries we have a black pipe and this pipe actually comes from the duck pond that you just saw it empties down the side of our garden empties into our test plot for apples yeah we have some blackberries which do really well here in the sand hills with all of our heat and we also have raspberries. Red raspberries definitely don't like to be above 80 degrees, which we have a lot of here. So most people wouldn't recommend it. Cooperative Extension wouldn't recommend red raspberries. But we just have to find the right microclimate to grow them in. What will that turn into? Oh, that's a white one. We brought these raspberries from our old house where we used to live. We carried them in a pot through a year in the cabin and being in the camper and potted them here. It is a little too sunny and I don't think they will do very well. Yes, the blackberries have prickles. So the red raspberries likely won't do too well here, but we want to be able to transplant them once we find the right microclimate in our garden. Red raspberries and blackberries are going to send up different canes each year. For red raspberries, the first year growth is going to just put on greens. And then the second year cane will put on the raspberries. So right here, this will be our raspberries coming up. And then at the end of the season, unfortunately, this cane will be dead. We'll prune it away, but new canes will develop. And then again, we just have random flowers throughout here. We had irises right now that are blooming, daisies, yarrow, black-eyed Susan flowers. There's a little persimmon tree back there. Lots of different flowers to bring the beneficial insects in. So we will walk you over to the herb garden. I'm gonna eat this one. This was our very first garden we had when we were living in the camper, right there. This is a mulberry tree. Again, you can hear those crunchy leaves. They have been killed twice by the frost, but they are starting to get new buds and grow, which is nice. I got this at the Sustainable Egg Conference when it was about this big before my daughter was born. So it's really neat to see it growing. I know it's going to get huge and massive, but I think it will see much love here. 
We have a big variety of blueberries planted. We have southern high bush. We also have rabbit eye, hoping that each one produces at a little different time and they can all cross pollinate and live well together. The intention for here is to have a bunch of herbs and a bunch of perennials, just more of a low maintenance garden. Again, this was the very first garden we did. We use cedar as the perimeter and the outside of the garden bed. I see you, Luca. And so far this cedar is holding up really well, but it was quite costly to do this garden bed. And so that's why the rest of the garden beds we have are using the materials we already had on the property, pine trees from when we cleared the property. We have echinacea growing in here along the back side. These were all daffodils. She's chewing plantain, which works great for ant bites. We have some catnip. We just put that in this year. Which I have. The oregano. Lavender. Chocolate mint, we just planted that this year. We used to have it at our old house too, and I loved the flavor. So I'm really happy we have it installed, but a lot of our herbs get ate before they get fully developed, as you can see. We're still trying to find the secret for the lavender. This lavender we brought from our old house last year took up this whole circumference it was huge but um we still struggle with lavender trying to find the magic secret for it here we also have thyme planted throughout our garden there's winter time and there's the summer time so it puts off like, um time when it's um circle time and we go <laughs> Different time, different type of time. The time we eat, the spice, an herb. Time. We just planted some purple sage this year. We have a lot of sage planted throughout the garden. This is sage is probably one of my favorite herbs, and it puts off a lovely purple flower and just a little bit that the bees absolutely love too. So we like to let it go to flower as well. A good beneficial. Yarrow is starting to come up every everywhere. And that's one of those things we started and it spreads. We actually started the yarrow right here. Again, it was just a little a little plant, a little pot we bought we brought our yarrow over from our old house and it just spreads and it is wonderful. It can be a healing medicinal herb or we like to have it just because of the bees. You can see all these bare spots here and that is where I have just simply gone in, taken out the yarrow and replanted it elsewhere. Behind me is where we first started with elderberries. We came here with two elderberry plants from our old house and out of those two elderberry plants, two sticks, this grew, we took from here and replanted all along that wall you just saw. So elderberry spreads like crazy. And you can see right here, this is an elderberry coming up. Right here, this is an elderberry coming up. Right here, we have an elderberry coming up. Right here. Yep, it just kind of comes up everywhere. Right our hope someday is to build a sprout house type of greenhouse right here. So that's a future project coming up. You can see all the weeds growing. We had grand intentions that if we mulched all the pathways, it keeps the weeds out. But the weeds grew on top of the pathways. So this is that one area where I have not weeded. And what I really want to do is get the chickens in here with that portable fencing and let them get all the weeds out for me. This was our very first asparagus patch. It's a Mary Washington asparagus. 
We also planted Jersey night asparagus, a big patch farther down in the garden. We made a video on that if you are interested in growing asparagus. But right now we are at the stage where we have stopped harvesting the asparagus and we are letting that asparagus fern out. So it would have been, see if I have any short pieces, it would have started here. It starts to fern out like this. No, it started under the ground. <laughs> You're right, it started under the ground. And now we just let that stay there for the whole year. And those ferns will send sugars down to the roots. <laughs> so that we can have an asparagus harvest next year. They put in flowers in your in your field. Thank you. All along the backside we have gladiolas and blueberry bushes. It's as big as you, Luke. We have some more lavender, strawberries, parsley, a whole bunch of irises. We have chamomile in here. We just transplanted this, so we will see. It's a low line. There's German chamomile and there's Roman chamomile. Our intentions for this garden were to have perennials, but chamomile is an Can herb technically so we put it here yes by the frost this is all bee balm and there's one rosemary kind of hanging on for dear life inside here and kale these bee balm we just started from seeds several years ago and it takes a while but eventually have patience with your wildflowers they'll come around in a couple years <laughs> Just a few weeks ago, this was full of greens. We have peppermint, sweet mint, and lemon balm. But again, that frost came in and charred most of it. So I'm hoping that that will grow back. This bed here has not been planted yet. We had our meat birds with a portable fencing in this garden bed about a month ago. They ate most of the winter pea cover crop. They left a few, some weeds grew. So this is a bed I still have to work on. Normally we leave this bed reserved just for flowers. We like to do a lot of seeds. But we haven't gotten that far yet. We just did this bed yesterday. Twice we had the chickens in on this bed with the portable fencing. Once for the meat birds and once for the heritage breed chicks. We came in yesterday, added a few buckets of compost to the top, and we have corn planted, sunflowers planted, zinnia flowers planted, and bush beans, just a standard green bush bean so that we can can those for the winter. In this bed, we have potatoes and we have horseradish growing. You can see these potatoes were hurt by the frost, but we still have some life going on. We also planted some calendula flowers in here. The horseradish stalks are growing nice and big. And the potatoes that we have growing here, we have a purple majesty, a Spartan splash, and a Yukon gold. We tried to plant some varieties in this bed that are ready for harvest around the same time, about 85 to 90 days. So hopefully we'll be able to plant this harvest, this whole bed all at the same time. Two full beds of strawberries. This was where I mentioned we should have thinned them out a little bit more. Lesson learned because we're not getting that many strawberries from here. But we are trying to water sometimes a couple times a day with this 90 degree heat. And we're starting to notice some berries plump out. So that's good. And this was an experiment here. Last fall, we took some transplants from this bed and we put them in this bed. We 
we laid down some weed cloth, we spaced out holes, and the hopes are that these plants will be a little bit more spaced out, plus they won't be able to send off all their runners and make it really difficult to maintain them for the year ahead. So we will see everything with gardening is just a big experiment. In our refrigerator right now, we have some lettuce that we have gotten out of here. I'm scared all that lettuce is gonna bolt. It's been 90 degrees. We have cabbages planted. We did have some insect netting on top of these cabbages, but the hailstorm we got took that out. So two things happening, three things happening right now with these cabbages. All these yellow patches, that's from the frost. I'm hoping that the cabbage lopper caterpillars don't find these cabbages, but as you can see, we've already had a couple stray chickens get out and they've ate some of the cabbages too. So someday we're determined to get a harvest of cabbages. Just might not be this year yet. <laughs> do you want to tell them whose garden this is? What do you have planted in here? Yes. Yesterday we were at the seed store getting some bush beans and she went around and found all the seeds that were kind of on the floor and wanted to plant them here in her garden. So we will see what comes up. We have a lot of flowers which are really good for who? Butterflies and bees. Good for the butterflies, good for the bees. I'll set it down. On each side of the garden, we have onions growing. Over here, we have a red onion variety. We planted this back in the fall. And I put a few strawberries. Ooh. In the middle of the onions because onions and strawberries are actually companion plants. We also use the weed cloth this year for the first time as an experiment. Onions are heavy feeders and we only use compost, but also because they take so long, we have a lot of weed competition going on. So we're hoping to keep the weeds out to let the onions bulb out a little bit more. Down at this garden bed, we also planted red onions. But right here we planted garlic. All the garlic failed. And so we just came in this spring and we planted a sweet onion. Look, look how long this is. Mm -hmm. The sweet onions do a lot better when you plant them in the springtime here. Technically these would be called Vidalia onions if they were grown in the Vidalia region of Georgia, but they're not. So they're gonna be ladybug farm onions. We'll call them. These are the nice ones that we like to use for onion rings. They're the good sweet ones. Here does not look like much. We are trying a bush pea, which is not normal. Most peas like to vine up just a little bit. These are Little Marvel. We got these from Baker Creek and they were just supposed to be bush pea plants, which you can see how terrible they're doing. They got killed by the frost. And then it was 90 degrees this week and peas don't like heat. So we will see what happens to them. Along here we have a lot. This is a radish that needs to be thinned out. And this was a radish planted a few weeks prior to that. So we did stud them with some radishes to grow up alongside those peas. In this bed we have fingerling potatoes. Fingerlings take a lot more time to develop. These ones are gonna take over 110 days. Plus they need a little bit more space in comparison to the other types of potatoes. So we have fingerlings growing. I put a couple sunflowers growing up in the middle, a couple calendula flowers, and then we have some turnips growing as well. But the chickens got out and ate some of those turnip seedlings. So 
I don't know if we're going to get any from here. Along these two beds, this was planted by our nature school. We have sunflowers growing up the middle. And then we have some watermelon plants, which are going to take up hopefully a lot of space. This far bed here, I'm really just hoping that Tulsi will re-sow itself. Tulsi! What is Tulsi? Tulsi. I'm named after it. It's my middle name. Yes. Tulsi is a type of basil called holy basil. It's an adaptogenic herb that is said to improve mood and decrease stress. And that was the type of tea that I've been drinking today. But I'm hoping that the Tulsi from last year will re-sow itself and plant itself here. And yesterday I came in and planted a few sunflowers as well. Behind me you can see the asparagus is growing. Again, the asparagus here is no longer being harvested. This is in the stage where we just let those spears come up and instead of harvesting them, we're going to let them fern out. Like this plant. Yeah. And, and this one's fat. Yes. So this has been named the, the green tunnel. It is not technically the type of fabric you would use in a high tunnel. This is just a strawberry cover or an asparagus cover that we put up to protect in. some plants. Along here we have strawberries. Last year we only had strawberries along the backside and we have allowed them. I've just propagated and moved them forward so they took over the whole bed. This was the first place to produce strawberries because this cover allowed them to be a little bit warmer and protected from the frost. Also along here we have some celery growing. Bad. That one can go to the chickens. And all along here we just have a lot of different greens growing. We have kale, we have lettuce, Curly kale, there's a difference between the curly kale and the dinosaur kale. Here we have a curly kale and here's a dinosaur kale. Curly kale! This bed was demolished about a month ago. We accidentally left the gate open and all the goats got out when we had the cover off mm. and they feasted. So it's very exciting that we're having some of the kale growing back and luckily I had some transplants still up at the house and we were able to transplant. What is that? Beans! What is it? Flowers! Peas! Those are our very first peas. Those are the king tut peas. How are they? Yummy! Mm. Go ahead. You, you go ahead. Thank you. Dispersed throughout the garden, we have little beets growing. And we also have squash growing. I planted some butternut squash, some acorn squash. There's hyssop growing. We mentioned that kind of just grows like a weed throughout. And black-eyed Susan flowers. Those just randomly come up throughout the garden as well. Those King Tut peas are along the backside. We put up a little net to hold the peas so they could vine, so that when we took this covering on and off, the peas could still reach up towards the sun. Edible, Edible flowers. What type of flowers are those? Borage. Borage. Yes, those are a borage flower. They're also a very good companion to have in the garden. Good for the bees, but their leaves are a little irritating, so just watch the leaves. Romaine is growing here. This is spinach. 
Our spinach did not do well this year. It all bolted, as you can see. <laughs> this is our compost pile. Nothing fancy, super easy, just pallets. Here's our maturing compost. We pick up from restaurants and families, and then with our own compost, scraps from the kitchen, and goat bedding, this is our maturing bin. You want to have, depending on how big your compost is, you can have six months to two years for a compost to mature. And this is what we're currently working on here. We also pick up a bunch of coffee grounds from a local coffee shop. There's some weeds from this morning gardening and some scraps, quite a few today because compost swaps were yesterday. But the chickens go in there and till all this up and by the end of tonight, you won't see any of this remaining. All the other scraps we feed out to our piggies that are here in the forest. Jelly's still out there eating the little bit that's left from breakfast this morning. Welcome to our greenhouse part of the garden. Our goal here, we are working to develop a child-friendly and a wheelchair accessible space so we can have the community come on out and play and harvest some food to take home. This space here was originally worked with cover crops and then worked by the pigs. It is clay soil here, and we had to regrade the land so that we could have a nice flat area for the greenhouse to be in. So what you are looking at, we are right in the middle of construction. We're almost done with the build of the greenhouse, but right off to the east, we have what will be a future driveway parking lot we have a ramp coming up so that you can wheel right on into the entrance of our greenhouse. We have a little retaining wall here. We're hoping to put in a grape and some nice seating. Haven't quite worked out all the logistics of everything here, but it will all come together. Outside garden beds have been constructed and planted. We have, let's see if I can lay out all of our seeds. We planted a lot of peppers this year. My family actually doesn't eat a lot of peppers, but we had a lot of peppers. We've also hosted seed swaps in the past, so I just used those pepper varieties that we had and we're going to find out how to cook them and share them with the community. Pretty much along this whole garden bed here, we have those varieties of peppers, and then we have this variety of eggplant. And what she is eating, what are you eating? Stevia. We have stevia. It's in the sugar. It is a very sweet leaf you may have heard about and we're hoping to dry that and put it in our tea blends this year. Typically you wouldn't plant your eggplants and your peppers until now, until May 1st, but we were able to put our peppers in now Not late. because of the greenhouse. These arches have also allowed us to cover up the plants on the colder nights that are below 55. Along this back wall, Jared and Leela have installed a bunch of goat paneling to allow us for vertical gardening. We have some tomatoes planted along the back edge. These are an indeterminate variety. They'll grow until frost. They'll keep producing. And 
Yep, right here. They're gonna go up against the whole thing. We have some loofahs. Make soup. Now I don't know how they will grow in the greenhouse, but I know they take a lot of space and they won't start producing flowers probably until September. And what seems to happen to us every year when we grow the loofahs, regardless of how early we plant them, is that we only get like a quarter of the loofahs because they all are not, they have not reached maturity out in the garden by the time the frost comes. So I'm hoping that they will have an extended life here in the garden and we can use those loofahs to help us make our goat's milk soaps. This whole bed, we have two rows of tomatoes. Now these are a determinate variety of tomatoes. These are gonna be our sauce tomatoes, our pizza sauce tomatoes. That will put that will put off all their tomatoes all at once. We ran out of tomato cages, so we are going to be doing a Florida weave throughout these tomatoes to help us stake these tomatoes up until harvest. Also planted throughout the tomatoes, we have basil. There's a few different varieties. And just yesterday I planted some nasturtium seeds too, which is an edible flower, a nice spicy edible flower. It's also a companion to those tomatoes. So this is phase one. The next phase for this greenhouse, we are installing five beds horizontally. Same design, but the same beds horizontally. We'll have wide enough alleyways here to allow wheelchairs to come in and easily rotate around. And then we are going to be laying down some ground covering as well. You can see how dusty it gets because it's so dry inside of here. So we're hoping that that will help with the dust and just make it a lot more comfortable and cleaner inside of here. Having a bunch of different raised beds will also allow us to rotate the crops that we are growing because next year we will not be able to plant any tomatoes here. As mentioned, if we plant tomatoes here again, the next year we just run the risk of disease. So we'll have to use one of these inside beds to plant our tomatoes next year. <laughs> so right now we are still in the middle of construction. Jared is working on putting the sidewalls up today. And the goal here at the entrance of our greenhouse is we're hoping to have a planting table right here and another planting table right here for starting our seedlings as well as a sink right here so that upon entrance and exit of the greenhouse we can wash our hands off and get clean so when we have children out here when we have community out here and they are harvesting we'll be able to have some sanitary practices, sanitary things in practice. Thanks for joining us. Hopefully we'll see you out on the farm this year. Have a beautiful day ahead.